Welcome. I'm going to give you guys two things that you need to know about concussions. Whether you're an athlete or the parent of an athlete, this is crucial information for everyone. And before I get into that, I want to cover just what it is that concussions are all about. When you have a traumatic injury to the brain, damage, damage occurs. And when there's damage inside the brain, there's a certain cell that turns on. And that cell is called a microglial cell. Microglial cells are trash men and they go around and sweep up all the debris and kick it out. When you have a concussion, there's a lot of debris that needs to be pushed out, and so those microglial cells are active. When they're active, we've got inflammation in the brain, that's why there's that dizziness, uh, the headaches, the pain, all that, the symptoms that are associated with concussions uh, have a lot to do with the inflammation that's going on in the head. Now, microglial cells are fine because once you have the concussion, usually over time they turn off. However, when you have multiple concussions, those microglial cells mutate. And when they mutate, they start to stay on and don't turn off. When they don't turn off, you constantly have inflammation in the brain, which leads to a lot of the symptoms that those NFL players describe in their lawsuits or after they commit suicide, we find out about. Um, it's, a, it's something that we call CTE or chronic traumatic encephalopathy, it's just inflammation of the brain, it's a big fancy word and it leads to symptoms like memory loss, confusion, dizziness, pain, uh, you name, suicide, you name it. All those, those nasty symptoms we see because of multiple concussions. Now here's the two things that I want you guys to know. First, NFL is what's the, the frontline page. It's what we normally associate with concussions, but the number one demographic for concussion is actually female soccer players in high school. And the reason that is, is because of the slender neck and they do a lot with the head when it comes to the soccer ball flying and, and heading it into the goal to a teammate, wherever. Puts a lot of pressure on the head, a lot of force. There's also never a concussion or a head injury without a neck problem or a neck injury as a result. Now that's more of a side note, but it's something to take into account. The second thing you guys need to be aware of, once you have a concussion, you're six times more likely to have another one six times. So that CTE, the symptoms that the NFL players have, once they have that first concussion, that second one is much easier to have. And that third and the fourth and the fifth. And that's where the real problems happen. And to make it worse, we don't really know how to classify a concussion. It's a gray area. It's not black or white. It's not you have one or you don't. It's more like, well, you could. All right. So what I encourage all athletes to do is if you have some kind of an issue where you have, you've been hit in the head, some kind of a trauma, Go see someone who specializes in neurology and the nervous system. Um, once you do that, make sure that they do a thorough exam and give you some sort of rehab exercises. It is not enough to get some sort of pain medication or to go home and just let the symptoms get better. You need to do some kind of rehab exercises. Hope you guys found this video valuable. Subscribe, comment, like it below. Thank you.